Hey everyone, Jamie Lee here with Bird Tricks, and today I'm going to be talking about how to flight train your budgie or parakeet. Featuring Blueberry. Come on, Blue. Good girl. This is my little blue budgie, Blueberry, and she's gonna be helping me demo how I flight trained her today. And how you can do it too, even if your budgie or parakeet is clipped currently. Right? Good kiss. <laughs> Good kiss. Hi. Go in, go in. Woo! <laughs> Having a flighted budgie around the house is probably the most fun ever. Just gonna say it's more fun than a macaw or a cockatoo being flighted around the house. Just saying. <laughs> Blue! Good girl. Good girl. Can you show everybody how you go upside down? Ready? Upside down. Good girl. Good job. Love you. Okay, you can go. You can go play. So the first thing I wanna say about this topic is try to, when you're doing this training, try to really reinforce your bird coming onto your hand and landing on your hand. Not on your head, not on your shoulder, not on your arm. Um, but on your actual hand. And this will let you know how well trained this is. Now, for those of you that have birds where you're just automatically thinking, my bird's terrified of hands, this is never gonna work for me. Um, you can definitely start by flight training your bird to your shoulder. I've known plenty of cocktails, <laughs> because cocktails tend to be very hand phobic naturally, uh, where people just flight train them to their shoulder and then they slowly transition that down to the hand. So if you're in a position where you need to start there, you definitely can, but I would highly recommend trying to start with flight training to your hand just to keep it clean from the very get-go. So you're probably wondering what do I do if my budgie or my bird in general won't land on my hand but only lands on my shoulder or my head. Um, the idea is that you transition them off. So whether you need to lure them down your arm onto your hand or if you can target them down which we'll talk about a little bit later. Um, Anything you can do to not give the positive reinforcement as far as the treat is concerned up on your shoulder or your head. So don't deliver the treat up there if you're wor really working towards the hand. You wanna make sure that the treat only ever comes to the bird when your bird is in the proper position of being on your hand. That will really clearly communicate that your bird needs to get there to get the treat. Even if they hop right back off, you're gonna be able to extend that amount of time that your bird hangs out there later. So you might be wondering, why have my bird land on my hand? Why can't it go onto my shoulder or onto my head? A lot of people like having their birds on their shoulders because it's just more convenient when they go to do their day-to-day -day things. And the thing that I like about having your bird land on your hand is it actually looks like a more trained behavior. You also, it's a lot more safe so that you just know what your bird is up to, how your bird's feeling, how your bird's reacting. A lot of the times going to the head or the shoulder is kind of a retreat where the bird might be escaping something that it might find a little intimidating. Um, whereas you know that your bird's a lot more comfortable on your hand. So that's why I really say, have your bird go to your hand. So obviously if you found this video, you're already interested in teaching your bird to come to you, but a lot of the reasons why you would want to train something like this is just for the utter health of your bird. Just like when you have a dog, you're supposed to take it on walks and get it exercise and get it outside. Um, birds need exercise too. And sometimes that can be proven a little bit more difficult in captivity. So flight training is a great form of exercise for our birds. The second reason that I really recommend flight training is just for your overall relationship with your bird. I believe that flight training is one of the number one ways to build a really amazing relationship with a bird. Um, it's probably some of the best feelings that I've ever had is having my bird choose to come and land on me. The third reason that you'd wanna train your bird flight training is just for skill development and safety. So keeping your bird safe where it can get out of situations that it needs to and come find safety, i.e. you, um, or get itself to safety. So really flight training builds skills that your bird should have should something happen or should it be in a predicament where it needs to be able to have those skills to escape something or find its way to safety. So this is my daughter Capri. She is Hello. at the time of this video seven years old and one of the things, well actually some of the things that we did with our budgie Blueberry before she could fly were forms of exercise and enrichment and were leading her to being able to flight train or recall train to us. Do you remember some of the things that we did for Blueberry? Mm -hmm. Can you name one of them? 
Um, one of them, when she was like first coming out of the cage, um, I wanted to cuddle her because she looks so cute. And so we let her out and we basically made a circle with her legs and she could like hop. But what did we do towards flight training her? Do you remember? Do you remember how we set up those ropes and things for her because she couldn't fly? Mm -hmm. You want to explain that? We set up like ropes um, on like the trees, the toy trees, so that, cause she can't fly, so she can climb up the ropes and she just loved those to climb on. Yeah, so it was a great form of exercise and taught Blueberry how to get out of trouble. So if there was any reason that she needed to get up off the ground, uh, because she was clipped at the time, she could just easily find her way to these ropes and climb her way to safety. You have to remember that birds like being high up. That means safe to them in nature. And so instinctively in captivity, they wanna be high up too. So giving them ways where they can be self-sufficient and get there is really, really awesome because still to this day, she uses ropes and ladders and all the things. Um, so make sure that if your budgie or your parakeet is clipped, that you kind of set it up where it can do that. The other thing that we did is walking recalls. So if your bird cannot fly, you can simply ask it to come to you and it can just walk, <laughs> hop, and eventually what Blueberry did, do you remember when she kind of hovered across the ground? She was starting to be able to fly. Yeah. And those cute little transitional periods are really important. It was so cute. <laughs> it was really cute. So keep in mind that even if your bird isn't capable of full flight, do things within its abilities and, and make sure that you're always working towards the greater goal of if my bird was fully feathered right now, would this be working towards that goal? And if the answer is yes, keep doing that. And we also have this like kind of tree stand that we put on this, what's that like desk called? Oh, just like a, it's a tabletop yeah, play it's stand. Yeah, a little tabletop. And then we have a play stand. And we actually used ladders for her on that, but, um, but she still can't fly. And she still goes up it, but she mostly would fly to it. Mm -hmm. Yep. So once Blueberry could fly, she started bypassing the ladders and the ropes. But they're still really awesome for those birds that start out clipped for whatever reason um, to eventually start using those muscles and getting used to getting themselves around. So as Capri was mentioning, we have a lot of play stands, tea stands, uh, foraging trees all around our home. We have one in at least every single room of our house and we have multiple shower yeah. perches. So our birds know all the safe spots in our home. It's really important to get your bird used to knowing what places are yes places where your bird can be, where it's out of trouble, it's safe, um, and it's not gonna get into anything it shouldn't. So having these yes spaces around the house is incredibly important, especially if your bird's obsessive about certain areas of the home, you can make sure that you have these either tabletop play stands or whatever suits your needs. Maybe it's just a single uh, tea stand. We have a variety of ones that we use. Um, you can have them on wheels, so you can kind of move them around, which we do. We kind of <laughs> redecorate all the time. Um, but having these safe spaces is gonna go a long way in teaching your bird your house and your home and your environment, and that will teach a lot of skill building that you don't necessarily have to work really, really hard at. Your bird will actually be working on it on its own time. Even like, if you don't really have a lot of tea stands, you can also use the cage yes you can have multiple cages spot. yeah so in capri's room she has a tabletop play stand which is at near like the top part of her top bunk bed and then she also has a cage for blueberry to be in that we often find blueberry putting herself away in especially when we have company over she tends to not want to hang out with company and she goes and puts herself away um, just to kind of be away from the chaos. And so having multiple cages is another aspect that you can definitely do if you don't want to do open play stands. And also your safe spot. Yeah, <laughs> people of the home should be the safe spot. So make sure that you're always reinforcing that you are a safe place to be. Blue. I was just talking close and close. Blue.
Blueberry. A little upside down. Whoa! <laughs> So I know that this next technique is something that everybody's really resistant to and I think that life for parrots in captivity would be so much easier if humans weren't so resistant to this technique. But teaching targeting is your number one thing. The reason is, especially for clipped birds, uh, this is your foundation. This is something that you're going to be able to fall back on when recall isn't working or you've made mistakes in your training session or what have you, but target training is it. So can you tell them what target training is? Target training, um, it's like a chopstick. You can break them like separate, and then you can actually use the target stick and like hold a clicker, and you can call the bird, and if they touch the tip, then you can click it and give a treat. If you, if they like bite it, uh, you wouldn't give a treat for that. No, so Any you really bird. want to be mindful that the bird's just touching the end of the stick, and that does mean with their beak. So they'll touch with the end of the end of the end of the stick with their beak, um, but you want to make sure they aren't biting aggressively because then you're just putting aggressive on cue. So you kind of want a curious tap or touch. And sometimes they'll also touch it with their tongue. So. That's a great method, especially for larger birds. So those of you watching that maybe have larger parakeets like the Alexandrian parakeet, um, those birds definitely have a big beak for their body <laughs> size. So you may wanna resort to teaching them to touch the end of the stick with their tongue. I did this with a hyacinth macaw because you could imagine how easy it was for him to accidentally break the end of the stick, um, just since we use chopsticks and they're made of wood. So keep in mind, however you need to get that gentle target, you just want a gentle touch. You don't want an aggressive bite down. And also it's super important for the birds to learn it. It's probably the first thing you should teach them. Yep, we've actually helped um, save a lot of birds that have gotten outside accidentally and ended up in trees. And uh, sorry, I was pushing you back. But the other thing is that target training is really powerful for birds who may be scared of human interaction, especially dealing with hands um, or just dealing with people in general. So it's a really great hands-off training technique where you aren't asking the bird to interact with your hand. So having that foundational training technique and having your bird be 100% at it is really important because if your bird isn't coming based off your recall, you might be able to pull out your target stick and ask them to target instead and here they come. And also like, I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> that happens to me all the time. Um, the other thing I want to say is just target training really comes in handy when you are reaching failure points in anything else. You just kind of go back to basics, back to your foundation, and target training is really it. So I'm going to show you some examples of target training with my budgie Blueberry, how we helped her learn the layout of the house, all the different areas that we give her to be able to land and have fun around the house, and some of the flight training that we do to keep it interesting for her. One of the things I will say that we kind of failed at early on, right before we lost Blueberry outside, luckily recovered her, so check out the video in the <laughs> video description. I will leave a link to that video because that was so scary for I'm us. I'm glad we got her back. <laughs> yeah, but one of the things that I had a failure point of was I didn't really work with Blueberry on ascending and descending. Um, wow, I did that backwards. But <laughs> so, so one of the things I didn't, I didn't really focus on was putting her at high up areas and then asking her to come down. And putting on the brakes was a failure point for her when she was outside, which is why she totally missed me in slow motion. <laughs> um, so I will say with small birds, we tend to overlook that stuff just because of their flight patterns, how they tend to fly, how they tend to be really flighty and fast. Um, so keep in mind all the skill building stuff you still want to focus on with them especially the ascending and descending especially the descending 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 <laughs> um, so definitely work on that try to find ways to make it really fun and interesting for your bird and make sure that flight training isn't the only thing that you're working on work on other things too to vary it up and keep training fun and interesting and always stop before your bird gets tired you don't want this <laughs> flight training to become an exercise regime where you're just like <laughs> boot camp and exhausting your bird you want your bird to always look forward to it and almost initiate the play. Mm -hmm. And another thing is don't ever force your bird to do it if they don't want to. Okay, so Blueberry is right there. I'm gonna get her to come into my room. Blueberry! Woo! <laughs> She's so hard to catch going in here. Good girl, 
play doh Okay, you want to go into the main room and then Capri's room? Let's see if we can do it. Blueberry! Whoa! So hard to catch her. Good girl! Let's keep going! Blueberry! She's on that second tree. Blueberry! Blue blueberry! She knows the house. Wanna do it again? Come on, Blue. <laughs> you got it. Yep, yeah, let's go. <laughs> Good girl, Blue. Good job, little Barry. Way too good at this game. Way too good. Come on, Mary. Woo! <laughs> blue, blue. Blueberry. Come on over this tree. everybody thank you so much for watching this video let me know what you liked about it in the comments and what questions you still have about flight training small birds and hopefully we can create that content for you in the future and don't forget to like and subscribe yeah <laughs>